Well, you know how we do a character corner every Friday. I'm going to start doing a comment corner every Monday. <laughs> See how far up my own ass I can crawl, right? Well, technically I'm crawling up your ass because, you know, responding to your comments. This first one's from uh, Continual Rise. And he's talking about um, cover stories. And I'm not sure exactly what he means by a cover story. I'll look it up and everything, but... Um, Actually, let me look it up right now. As the name suggests, cover stories are additional stories from the world of One Piece that Oda tells through the chapter covers. So this is something he specifically invented that no other manga does, apparently. Because I'm not getting a good definition. I'm not really sure I understand what the hell's going on. Are they saying it's just one panel? The cover is just a panel and it's its own story? People, uh, I see they're even talking about cover arcs. Where, say, you have ten chapters and those ten chapters would tell, would be one page of the arc. If, very interesting. He sounds innovative as hell. He really does. He sounds incredibly innovative. Like, just endlessly innovative. I consider myself an innovative filmmaker. I try it out of the box thinking. I don't think, okay, this is a norm, so this is what we're doing. I'm always trying new things, right? And you'll see that even with my channel. I'll try different things. If I like them, I keep doing them. Eventually, I may stop liking them, and I'll stop doing them without ceremony either way, right? You know? But... He's like, I mean, like I'm down here and he's way up there. I'm not even comparing myself to him. I'm just saying I, I like the way he, I like the way he is because like I'm, I'm similar to that at a much lower level, obviously. So I just like this whole cover story thing, but I don't really understand it. So I did try to do my own research, but I don't, you know, I'm also, because since it's so one piece specific, there's going to be spoilers. So I can't, if it was a general statement, this is what manga cover stories are. I could probably delve deeper into research. That being the case, if you want to elaborate, let me know. Like, how many covers is it? Is it like a panel? Is it basically just a comic book panel that is the cover? Or is it the inside? Because at first I thought he was saying like the inside of a cover. Like you have the cover art. You flip it over and that's still the same piece of paper that's the cover, right? A lot of times you'll see like recaps and stuff on those in, in comic books. There'll be a recap. There'll be like, this is the premise. This, uh, they call it a saga sale. Um, the first season of Buffy, in every generation there is a slayer. That's called a saga sale. You know, they're, they're selling the saga to you, right? Like this is, they're, they're trying to encapsulate everything. That, uh, Once Upon a Time did it too, right? You know, they're just, it's like usually narration. They're just trying to uh, encapsulate the entire premise of the series in one paragraph. So a lot of comic books will do that. And it may be like, you know, previously on that kind of thing, sometimes they'll do that. But that's what I assume people were, uh, he and other people were saying when they were talking about a cover story, that it was the inside of the cover. It wasn't the outside. The outside of the cover of most comic books and mangas are like posters. And Superman's Notorious were like, what they would show on the cover of that particular comic book would have nothing to do with what's happening inside. It'll be like, you know, Lois will walk in and Superman's, you know, hosing down some secretary, uh, got her bent over the desk and he's hosing her down. And then she'll be all upset and she's like, oh, that's it, we're divorced. And then you flip inside and Lois ain't even in the episode. She's not in the comic book. That particular episode, that chapter. Like, it'll be something like he's over on Mars and he's dealing with Martian Manhunter or something. It has nothing to do with the cover. Not that Superman or, you know, would have sex with the secretary even if he, uh, in the office, on the desk, even if he wasn't with Lois, and he sure as hell wouldn't do it if he was with Lois, that's why they, they have that uncovered, because they're trying to get you to open it up and look at it. It's, it's Superman comic was so notorious for this. There is a website that doesn't exist anymore because they ran out of material, right? They, they ran out of content. But it was called Superman's a Dick because they always made him look like an asshole in the, in the covers. But the covers have nothing to do with what's in the story inside, right? Absolutely nothing. That, that story that they're telling in the cover would never, it never, would never happen and did not happen in that episode. So, usually, comic book covers are posters. They're advertisements. They're trying to get you to buy it. It's not a story. There's no actual content. There's nothing canon in there. Yeah, I even saw people debating are the cover stories canon or not, which is interesting. So, but, you know, I know I'm saying comic book and manga is its own art form outside of comic books, but it's, it's the only point of comparison I have. Because I haven't read any manga. I've read comic books. So, what I'm interested in is the differences between the two. 
So that's a great comment. Thanks for that. And keep the comments coming. And every week I'll highlight one comment. Every Monday I'll talk about one of the comments. And I'll try to mix it up with people. But if you're, you know, if you continuously have very interesting comments, you may get a lot of action there. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, you know where we are? You know how we're starting. Three, two, one. I like the sound effects, by the way. I'm not sure those sounds would happen underwater, but, you know, it's an aesthetic. <laughs> Usopp's growing on me. I don't like him. Like, I don't like like him. He's growing on me. You can respect somebody without liking him. I respect his hustle. And he is hilarious when he's running. <laughs> that dude can run, man. <laughs> he's trying to live. <laughs> That's right. Kick his corpse. He's about to light you up. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> Getting wrecked. Man, he is not. I don't think I noticed that last time. Did I notice that he knocked over an entire tree with one kick? That'd be damn useful. I'm trying to clear a field back here behind the house, right? That'd be damn useful. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I go sleepy now. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't been talking shit. Really? Was that the the spitting? Uh, the spitting? Oh, he he can throw water at you and light you up. Yeah, okay. I don't think I got grasped the full context of that last episode. That's right. Kick his ass. I don't think I, I caught the dialogue. Because, you know, like, I have to talk, like, at some point during an episode. So I'm going to miss a few things here and there. That's just, that's the way it is. It's baked into the process. Cost of doing business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Of course, you realize this means war. Damn right. <laughs> Did she? Really? She was trying and he actually noticed, huh? How does one try assassination? Poison is assassination. That feels redundant. Yeah, let's see what the spider thinks of this. Yeah. You just called yourself a man. I thought you said you were a fish. Fish man, I guess. She's done, man. She's not having it. That's not nice. <laughs> I like how her eyes change. Damn. Do I have to be happy? I don't know about all that. He knows how to play her. Denied. It'd be interesting to see what choice she would make if he said he would spare everybody, right? If he would spare everybody, I think she would come back happily. You know, quote unquote happily. Why does everybody got to be weak? Yeah, they are wrecked, man. Everybody's pretty much tapped out. Ish. Oh, third friend. Yeah. Never mind, I take back my ish. 
<laughs> She's sweating. What do you think about this, Spider? There's no debate here, man. You got to fight him. It is despicable. I guess I see the metaphor they're doing with the spider. You come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. I get it. Okay. I was wondering why they keep coming back to this stupid spider, but I, I understand. It was a little too on the nose. I think that's why I wasn't getting it. But I like it. It's probably more subtle in the, in the manga, right? You got to be a little bit more overt in, in this kind of thing. You can have something in the margins in a manga and it not be so obvious. It's harder to do that in animation. Yeah, he's not happy. Oh, well, nothing to do but die. <laughs> There's something about her character design. When she's determined, it's, it's hilarious. There's something, I don't know, it has something to do with her eyes and her mouth being like a flat line. It just, it cracks me up. It's a very, you know, it, it, I'm sure it's a character design. I wonder if him being awake is going to help anything, because he can't move, can he? <laughs> yeah, get your ass up. Right. He's been revived. Once you guys get in the water and get this uh, rock off his feet. <laughs> He's not looking so great. It's not, I don't think it's just as simple as getting him out of the water. He even needs a little bit of time to recover here. Not that they have time. Because they don't. That's right. Sword in the mouth. I guess it's up to him again. Yeah. Yeah. Say, I saw water go up in the air. That's weird. That's right. I need you with some drawn butter. Oh, uh, are your feelings hurt? Yes, don't lick your own blood. That's disgusting. Don't lick anybody else's blood. No blood licking of any kind. It's all disgusting. But... Kicking underwater doesn't work. There's too much resistance. <laughs> so we ain't worried about chest compression because he's awake. Okay. So he wasn't paralyzed. He was just unconscious. So he thinks it's interference. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of creepy when it's just your head, dude. <laughs> he made him go full vampire teeth. I think you kind of pissed him off. Yeah. He ain't about fairness. I thought he was, man. I thought he was honorable. It would be interesting to have a villain who's honorable because they have limitations. But it's harder to write that. That's right. Rock to your head. Or was that an egg? <laughs> I like these idiots. Everybody needs a hype man, you know? Or two. <laughs> yeah. He is wrecked, man. Oh, the way does that still catch up on his face? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we knew who you meant, idiot. A piece of cake, man. You were running for your life. That's a radical interpretation of the text. You damn right he did. Yeah, I like it when he gloats. <laughs> yep. Hey, that's kind of meta. What does the moth think about this? I guess he's a free of the spider, right? Like she is. Uh, nope. Yep, I'm kind of weak. <laughs> How much longer can you hold your breath? Because she's straining too, right? Because that's going to really burn up that oxygen. You know, the cook 
He, he was hired to be a cook, and he's cooked like one meal on the ship so far. Mostly he's fought, which, you know, it's been more necessary. It's just an observation. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? How many, how much more ammo does he have, right? Uh, the octopus has opinions. <laughs> See, it's all about being brave to these the two brothers, right? Are those guys actually brothers or are they just friends? I'm confused on that point. Sure, why not? Idiot. Well, it's all about his nose. His nose is annoying, I'll give you that. It, it, the way it's jagged, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I'm starting to think the author is a little obsessed with noses. It's gotten a lot of screen time to subject matter, you know. He's, if he kicks your ass just with his nose, put your swords down forever. I'm just saying. Make him at least use these, right? <laughs> yep, yeah, somebody do something about the octopi too. I keep saying pie. It's one octopus is an octopus. Octopi is more than one. Yeah, he's sitting there scared all this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you lucked into this, dude. Yeah. Somebody call him out. He's starting to annoy me. Uh, don't let him go in the water. Just, ah, oh, crap. Too many enemies. That's not good. Yeah, but I'm worried until I die. Until that moment that that happens. Because I ain't seen you kill anybody yet. Well, I actually have seen him kill somebody. But he used a gun, so that's kind of a bitch move. <laughs> Obsessed with noses. Never really got that. It's a nose, man. <sighs> Not good. Took your eye off the nose. How, how long does it take you to swim down, dude? He's been swimming down for like 10 minutes. How deep is this water? It, doesn't, it didn't seem like it was that deep. It's like 100 feet maybe, you know? How about you kick this? Maybe you want to get up and get some oxygen. Oh, yeah, she's got to do something about this. I don't know what she can do. Whatever he's going to do, he better do it fast. What are you going to do? <laughs> Dude, fast. Fritter Frenzy. I need a name for my attacks. <laughs> She's just going face first? Like that's her plan? That feels like a bad plan. Man. He's got about the scruff of the neck. Yeah. Too easy. Ow. You're a dick. <laughs> wow, you suck. <laughs> These guys. Oh, that scar. It's pretty fresh, man. Is he going to die on us? Like, I'm starting to feel like they're going to kill off Zoro. I don't think so. It feels like Didi has so much untapped potential, right? Yeah, he's awesome. How is this possible? He is pretty awesome. There's a reason why I like him. That dude, man, he, he just does not give up. He's got a lot of fight in him. They're the eyes of a hero. He's pretty thoughtful for a shark. He contemplates, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but see, I don't stay put. Sure, man, it's hilarious. Uh oh. Oh, right. Gotcha. Octoman should, should, shouldn't have been moving around so much. <laughs> what was her plan, man? She was just going in face first. Like, I, I, I admire the hustle, but, like, you got to have a plan. That is pretty cool. I like how they set that up. <laughs> hey, man. Like I said, it is magic. There's probably some magic physics going on here. If you can have a stretchy band and power is such that, you know, water takes away his powers, then you can be able to destroy things underwater. Like with your... So I don't think real world physics really apply in every situation. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> You're about to get thrown back, dude. <laughs> I'm back, baby. Watch you fall right back into water. <laughs> He's up in the air. He can't control where he goes, right? It's not like you flap your little arms. <laughs> Another thing this series loves is reaction shots. They are obsessed with how other people are processing what's happening. You know? <laughs> He's tired. <laughs> That's right. You're about to catch yourself. Don't land in the water. Oh, he does have a little bit of power. He can stretch his arm out and do something, right? He has no, no leverage, though. Like, he he's not grounded on anything, you know? Again, I'm not trying to apply real-world real world physics here. Look at me. He's stretchy, man, right? Like, come on. But you do have to think about it as a writer. Like, these are the rules, and these are the rules I'm going to break. Say there's ten rules of physics. You should never break more than five. You never should, should never break more than half the rules, right? It's okay to break some, though. You just got to be consistent. That's right. Give them this work. <laughs> That's right. Catch this. I don't think it's going to be this easy, but I like to see him down. Because F him. I think he made you mad. <laughs> yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> These guys are hilarious. Everybody is worn out, man. They're going to need a week off. A week off vacation just to recover from this. <laughs> you better stretch it out. <laughs> Stretching is an important part of the workout. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Yep. That's right. I don't care about your anger. I can get mad too. People talk about, don't make me mad. Well, you know, everybody can get mad. You ain't special. <laughs> he really don't care. He's just stretching. He hasn't even started. <laughs> yeah. You don't have nothing. Sit your ass down. <laughs> One last cigarette, huh? <laughs> Whatever. I think I'm just going to lay here. Uh, nothing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> not bad. He does not care about you, dude. <laughs> Is he serious, though? 
Uh, nobody cares about your racism. Yeah. You try to stab me with your nose. That feels kind of on the nose. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's going to try to... See, he is... I think he's vulnerable to Sharp, right? Uh-oh. Damn. So, Luffy does have to worry about that. Uh, keep out of his mouth. Man. He went full uh, Samson. Exactly. The ability to be rubber doesn't matter if you're, you're chopped in half. What, the bite? Who cares? Ain't nobody bowing to nothing. Hey, ho. <laughs> I like it when he talks trash. <laughs> now you're being racist. <laughs> now you're being racist saying it's, it's impossible for any fish anywhere to beat you. Like, I think a fish can probably beat him. You know, anybody can lose. So, like I say, like... As a writer, you just have to understand. You have to understand real world physics first. Then you can break the rules. Case in point, where does strength come from? Okay, so I'm standing in front of you. You're standing in front of me. I'm going to throw a punch. And this punch connects with your jaw. Where does the strength come from? Think about it. I want you to, this is a thought experiment. Think about this. Does it come from the fist? No. The fist is the delivery system for the strength. The fist is the tip of the spear, shall we say. Okay. The strength isn't in the fist. Okay, well, maybe you'll say, like, the strength is in the biceps. You know, the guy has big arms. He has big arms. He hits you. It's going to hurt. The strength isn't coming from the biceps. Well, where does the strength come from? Does it come from the torso? Maybe he has a really strong torso. Like, he swings his body when he, when he swings a fist. Does it come from the torso? It's not coming from the torso. It's coming from his legs. He has really big legs. He never skips leg day. You're getting closer, but it's not coming from the legs. The strength is coming from the pressure of the foot against the ground. You've got gravity working here. You've got pressure. When you throw a punch, you are instinctively pressing down against the ground. And what you're doing is... You're leveraging yourself. You're propping yourself against the ground. And then the, the strength comes all the way from your foot, contacting the ground, up your leg, up your torso, through your arm, and it comes out of your fist. That's where the strength comes from. It comes from the connection between your foot and the ground. If you were dangling in midair and you swung and you hit somebody, nothing would happen. They would barely feel it. There'd be a little bit. Now, now, I'm being a little hyperbolic here. Like, you'd feel a little bit. You'd feel a little pressure. Maybe it'd even hurt a little bit. If I'm, like, dangling, like, I say I've got a harness. And I'm dangling from a branch and a tree. And you're standing in front of me. And I hit. But most of that energy is going to spin me around like a top. Why do you think that is? Why is it that I can punch you if I'm dangling from a tree and I get spun around like a top and you barely feel it, but if I'm standing in front of you, that punch is going to feel a lot different because the strength is coming from the connection of your foot to the ground. That's where the strength comes from. Now, how much power you have in that punch is then affected by, like, you have strong legs, you have a strong torso, you have a strong bicep, maybe you've even been working your wrist. You got, of course, you got to do the wrist exercises, right? Maybe you've been working the wrist. Okay, fine. That'll accentuate. That's a force multiplier. That'll accentuate. But the power comes from you standing on solid ground. You have a good... That's why they talk about your footwork so important when you're fighting. How you have positioned your feet is crucial. Because if your feet are positioned the right way, your, your punch is going to have a lot more power behind it. That's where it comes from. So anytime you see any of this crap... Or somebody's floating in the air and they throw a punch. The only way that that punch would do anything is if they have magic involved. Okay, you know, we get that. 
So it's important to understand these things. So then you can write it in a way that like, okay, well, if it's just magic, then it's magic, fine. You know, if Luffy's floating in the air and he extends his hand out and he throws a punch, there's not going to be any force behind that unless it's magically accelerated somehow. Now, that's what I thought he was going to do, but what he actually did is he just pulled Zoro away and put him somewhere else. Okay, that's fine. So I'm not saying I'm not saying this as a criticism of the show or anything like that. What I'm saying is that as a writer, you just have to know the physics of the situation. Then you can break the rules if you want to. Superman doesn't stop a truck because he's strong. Superman stops the truck because because of friction between his boot and the concrete of the road is more powerful than the mass times acceleration, which equals the force, of that truck. The truck is coming at 60 miles an hour, and the truck weighs 4,000 pounds. So it's 60 miles an hour times 4,000. That's the amount of force we're talking about here. So what we're saying is his weight, his mass, and the gravity is his acceleration. It's his mass times the gravity of his acceleration. Like he's actually, he's moving down. Gravity is moving him down. Just It's an infinitesimal amount, but it's happening. It's moving him down. That creates the friction. His mass has to be so large that's a small multiplier of the gravity pressing down on the ground. And also the tensile strength of the material. And the tensile strength of his uh, boot. There's also a little bit there, right? Like that creates the friction that can hold him in place. Concrete pavement is kind of rough, so that that makes it you can you it uh, modifies it so you can stay in place a little bit better, you know because you got the the friction you know you got the the rough surface and in his boots if his boots are really smooth that'll be you know it'd be easy to push him around if his boots are rough it's harder to push around you know what I'm saying so you factor all this in. Typically, people cartoon writers and, and comic book writers will just have the truck hit Superman and. Just stops in place like Superman was a brick effing wall. But what they're not factoring in is most likely the mass of the truck times the acceleration equaling the force. That force is going to be more, it's going to be a higher number than Superman's mass times gravity holding him in place with the modifiers, like I said, of the surface. The surface of his boot and the surface of the concrete. That's where the give is. Any force interaction in the in our world, what is the weakest point and that weakest point will give? You have a sword, you have a hilt, and the sword is two feet long. Where What's the weakest point of that sword? Most likely it's going to be the connection between where the sword is and that hilt, where those two things connect together. It's going to be the weakest point. Chances are that's what will shatter. Maybe, it'll, maybe there's an imperfection in the sword and... 18 inches down the blade, there's an imperfection, so it's a little bit weaker there. That'll be where the sword breaks. It doesn't just randomly break in a random place. It'll break where the weakest part is. Where's the weakness? Superman's very strong. His connection of his boots to that pavement is not as strong as Superman is. So he won't be damaged, but he would be pushed back. And some, a couple of cases, you'll see where his boots dig into the concrete. I think they may have done this in Hancock. Which is a Superman analog, you know. So they'll show, like, the truck will get stopped, but he's pushed back three feet and he's dug a foot into the concrete. And that's what finally stops the truck. So it's not enough to just be invulnerable. It's not enough to have a large mass. The mass has to work out. It has to make sense. So, like I said, this is probably way too nerdy and way too tedious for most people. But I'm saying if you're a writer, you have to think about these things. You know, it's okay to break them if you know what you're doing. You've got to be consistent. So you can't have Superman stops the truck immediately because magic. But then later, there's some other thing where Superman is knocked across the room by a much smaller force. Well, the magic has to be consistent. You, know, you can't have Bane come in and, and hit Superman and knock him across the room if, he's not, if he doesn't have more mass and uh, acceleration than that truck did. You see what I'm saying? So, like, you just, as long as you're consistent, because if you're not consistent, people may not know why, but they'll know something's wrong. They may not know why, but they'll know something is wrong if, if, unless you're consistent, because we innately do calculations. We do math in our heads. When we throw a baseball, there is math being done by our brain 
to let that ball leave the hand and hit a target. How well we do the math and how coordinated we are physically will be how well we, we aim at the target, but we're doing math. So I think subconsciously people can pick up on things like, I don't know what it is, but that don't make sense to me. And that's what it is. Like the, the brain is doing math in the background. So yeah, like the, probably the most tedious thing I've ever gone into, but like you got to think about these things, man. If you want to be, uh, tell a good story anyway. 